Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on interpreting t-test and ANOVA output after a violation of the assumption of homogeneity of variance. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the data editor in SPSS, fictitious data, and I have a variable, independent variable, treatment, and a dependent variable, depression. I'm going to use these same two variables in a t-test, an independent samples t-test, and ANOVA. The treatment variable just has two levels, 0 and 1. And if I move up here to this A1 key, you can see it's psychodynamic or treatment as usual. And then we have a depression variable. With only two levels of the independent variable, you do not need to run ANOVA. You could stay with t-test but I wanted to choose variables that could be run in both a t-test and ANOVA for this example. Of course, they're going to produce the same results. Just keep in mind that typically with ANOVA, we're going to have more than two levels of the independent variable. So the test used to detect a violation of the assumption of homogeneity of variance is oftentimes the Levine's test and we can run that as part of the t-test and the ANOVA in SPSS. The Levine test tests the null hypothesis that the variances are equal. This is referred to as homogeneity of variance or homoscedasticity. So to test for homoscedasticity for independent samples t-tests, we'll go to analyze, compare means, then independent samples t-test. And for the test variable, this is the dependent variable, so it would be depression. And the grouping variable is the independent variable. This will be treatment. We need to, to define groups. I'll click on define groups. In this case, it's just going to be group 1 as 0 and group 2 as 1. The actual value of each level in that independent variable treatment. Under options, I'm not going to make any changes. Click OK. And we can see here, we're going to be looking at the independent samples test table. And we have a significant p-value for Levine's test, which means we would reject the null hypothesis that the variances are equal. So in this case, we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance. We do not have homoscedasticity. If this p-value were greater than 0.05, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis that the variances are equal, and we would say that we have met the assumption of homogeneity variance. So in terms of interpreting the result, for t-test it's fairly straightforward. We have equal variances assumed, this is homoscedasticity, and equal variances not assumed. That's heteroscedasticity. So because we have a statistically significant Levine's test, and we're assuming that we do not have equal variances, we're going to interpret the second row, equal variances not assumed. And you can see here that out to three digits to the right of the decimal, the p-value for this t-test is the same for both of these rows, equal variances assumed and equal variances not assumed, 0.515. But if we were to extend this out beyond the three digits, we would see that these two p-values are not identical. In the case of a t-test, this is testing the null hypothesis that there is a difference in the means between the psychodynamic group and the treatment as usual group. Here we would fail to reject that null hypothesis, and we would assume that there is no difference between the means of these two groups. So this is for a t-test. What about ANOVA? So if I go back to the editor, again we can see we only have two levels of this independent variable treatment. ANOVA would usually be for three or more levels, but we can still conduct an ANOVA here. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Compare Means, One-Way ANOVA. And again for the dependent variable we have depression, and for the independent variable treatment listed as factor here. And under options, 
we have the homogeneity of variance test, and we have the Brown Forsyth. So in this case, because we conducted the Levine's test as part of the process of running the t-test, we know we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance. So I'm going to go ahead and check off Brown Forsyth. We'll click Continue and click OK. And again, we have statistically significant finding here for Levine's, and we knew that. And we have the same probability value here for ANOVA, 0.515, but because we violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance, we can't interpret this value. Instead, we're going to interpret the results of the Brown Forsyth test. And again, you can see it's 0.515, but if I go up here to ANOVA, double click this, you can see this is 0.514650. That's what we have here for ANOVA. And for the Brown Forsyth test, double click that and expand that out, it's 0 0.515064. So for the T test, if we have heteroscedasticity, we can interpret the equal variance is not assumed. It's built right into the table. For ANOVA, we run the Brown Forsyth test in addition to the standard procedure for ANOVA and we interpret the p-value here in this table. Robust tests of equality of means. I hope you found this video on homogeneity of variance to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.